better for sure. Hey, what's up guys? In today's video, I'm gonna try and finally get these rear shock extenders mounted on the truck and get them installed. So uh, it's been a bit of a fight, but I'm gonna try to finally make it happen. I know some guys were asking about this and why I'm using these and why I don't use shorter shocks. That's because I have these available. I have brand new Belltech rear street performance shocks on there. So I don't wanna spend the extra money if I don't have to. Plus this is probably the more practical way like I said, everything is pretty much here with the exception of a few dollars in hardware that I had to get that I was missing from the brackets. So I think what we're gonna do is first we're gonna have to move the Viper out of the way. We'll get the Dakota up and in here. But what I'm going to do is to make these brackets work, I think I'm going to end up grinding this angled portion straight and across and I think that should make it work. I'm just gonna take some measurements off the truck once we get in here and get it up. And hopefully this project isn't a nightmare. So. Let's uh, get that truck in here and see how we make it. So I'm gonna try a different filming technique with you guys, just for something different. So as ridiculous as it looks to the neighbors maybe, I'm gonna try wearing this as a point of view for you guys and you guys can kind of see how this all looks. So let's go ahead, we'll start up the Dakota. Got the key here. I'll move it out of the way so we can get that out. straight out of here. We'll pull this thing off to the side. So here we go guys, the truck is up in the air and I'm just gonna take off one of these for now so we can get to work. So it's a 15 on one side, 18 on the other. And the bolts just slide out as long as it's not all rusted, which I know that some guys shocks are. Let's hold on a second, see how long it's coming out just so you guys have an understanding of what I'm trying to achieve here. That's how compressed this shock is. So you can see it was just about bottomed out. I mean, we can test out what the full bottoming is. If we press this all the way in, it does have a pretty far range of motion, but. So that's full bottom from where we are. But this is supposed to help if it doesn't. Oh well, we'll go to plan B, which is get shorter shocks. But uh, so this is the line that I'm trying to follow. So see this line here and the bolt hole. So I'm gonna cut the brackets so that they line up with this because for some reason they're going across at an angle right here, which you can probably see that little mark from me kind of slamming it on for a test fit. What I'm talking about, it's this. So see how this bracket's going on at an angle. It needs to just come straight across right here. So I'm gonna take a measurement for that. And like I said, it's pretty much just right here. It's gotta be trimmed out straight. And then we'll bring it across to that weld there. So I'm just gonna come straight down here on both sides and that should let it slip on nicely. Okay guys, so I took my measurement and I just scribed this line here. So I just took a square and I can do the same on both sides and then we can cut across. All right, guys, I ended up taking it right past that well just so we get a nice clean surface that's gonna mount to our backing plate. So these are these triangle pieces that we knocked out of both sides. And we'll go ahead and we'll test fit it. I just can't really touch it because it's a million degrees right now. Okay, guys, and we are achieving the results that we wanted. So you can see the bracket there fits nicely along that line. I got our bolt in. I'm gonna swap bolts. I just threw these in there temporarily. And on the back, you can see we're just slightly off. So we're gonna have to drill just one new hole back here, but not a big deal. So once I get all the bolts done, I'll run a drill bit through the pre-existing hole on the back, which you can see here. 
I'll just run a drill bit from the front to the back, make our hole, and then we can have our bolt. It's gonna hold all this up beautifully, and this bracket is gonna be tight to here, which is what I wanted to achieve. So this is gonna work out perfect, you guys, and look at that shock length. So she'll be riding right where she needs to be to be uh, hopefully riding a little bit better, and then once, uh, once we get tired of this setup, or if this doesn't work as we want, then we can obviously go ahead and we can change out these shocks and remove the brackets. But everything's reversible, which is what I wanted. I didn't want to be hacking up anything and I wanted it to actually work properly. So um, let's go ahead and I'm gonna pop the shock off. I'll drill our holes through the back. I already saved you guys uh, the aggravation of watching me cut this portion off, but you can see what I did there. So let's take this off. Uh, I'm gonna get everything kind of situated and I'll drill a hole through the back. Okay guys, so I got my hole drilled and my bolt inside of there. Hopefully you guys can see right there. And she's through. So nothing's tight, but we're going to be able to bolt this down, snug up against there, then tighten this one down. Some guys made some comments about putting a spacer in here. I might do that afterwards, but I'm just not going to crush the absolute crap out of this. And this is going to be holding all of our rocking force. So I'm not going to have to over tighten this and try to crush this bracket. So um we're making progress boys so i'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing on this side so i'm just gonna mock up the exact same thing i did there so that we're even on both sides and we should be good to go so let me get this one all done and the hole drilled and everything mocked up and then we'll continue all right guys so we got this bracket finalized take my word for it she does fit bolt goes through what i was actually thinking on collars you guys is see these shock collars I've got a couple old shocks, but I don't want to sacrifice them just yet, but that's what I'm going to end up doing. I'm going to just take out the collar out of them, and then that'll be my perfect spacer for right there. I just have a couple DJM rear shocks that Jason gave us, but I kind of want to try them. Just They're used, but they might not be a bad idea just to try them and see how they compare to the Beltex. So um, I will get that collar in there. I'm just not going to crank the bananas out of it, but she'll be all right for now. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and pull these both off. I'm gonna paint them black since we've you know modified them and drilled some holes so they don't keep rusting or something. And then we'll pop them both on here and finalize this and wrap this up. All right guys, it's actually day two. So I decided to let the brackets that I painted just with some regular paint, nothing crazy, just, you know, Rust-Oleum. It's got paint and primer in it. <clears throat> and I just hit them, let them dry overnight just so that uh, when I put them on, it wasn't gonna try to immediately just rub off or you know slide off so anyways that's that i'm assuming uh, me jamming the shocks in there is gonna kind of rub a little bit off and we can touch it up in a second so i'm gonna put the truck back up we'll bolt everything together and i'll show you guys the final product and finally we have some shock extenders on the truck all right truck is up in there you guys know what the deal is okay so we'll grab our hardware Let's throw our bracket on and I'm going to tighten down this bolt in the back first, you guys, before I tighten down the main bolt that runs through it. So she is solid already. That's the way we wanted it. Not like that other mumbo jumbo loose bracket that we were trying to make work last time. So I'm going to get everything in here and loose. I'll get my shock in here and then I can tighten everything up finally. Okay guys, so everything is snugged up and tight. So this is gonna be a better solution for us. Like I said, everything fits, it's tight. It's not gonna be you know clanking around and whatnot. And I think I'm a lot happier with that. So anyways, I still gotta do this side. Let me get this all rigged up. We'll go for a quick ride and I'll give you guys my honest review. Okay guys, so we've got them on. Everything looks good, everything's tight. Let's go ahead and take this thing for a ride.
handling it a lot nicer. If I had to put a number on it, I'd say like at least 30 to 40% better ride in the back now. Let's try this bump here because I know this one's a bit funny. Oh yeah. Guys, it's a big difference. And I didn't, like I said, I didn't change the shocks. It's just the way it's the only last thing I have to do is fix my tailgate, which I have all the parts for uh, back at the garage there. So, but yeah, it definitely rides way better in the back right now. Normally there's some of those bumps you would hit them and it would kick a lot harder and it would hit you in the back of the head. Like the back of the headrest felt like it would hit you in the back and uh, I would bounce and it would bottom out, but I haven't felt it bottom just yet. I'm gonna do a little spin around here and I'll know going back to this section how it feels too. All right, so here's another section where it kicks pretty hard going through all these little small slow speed bumps. Let's see. This one I know is bad. Yeah, way better you guys. Much, much better. I mean, it's gonna get even better when we put some different shocks on there, which we probably will do. I just, I really wanted to try this stuff for you guys since I pretty much had it sitting around. I figured might as well do a little R&D for you guys and see, see whether some of these, you know, parts or, you know, different solutions actually do work. Yeah, it's, it's a lot more tolerable now. It was real bad in the back before this. Now it's actually not too bad, honestly. My tailgate's complaining more than anything now. And there's one more bump that I know is a little bit fun over here. say it's better for sure how much I would say like maybe 30 40 percent it's not like the most crazy improvement in the world but it's definitely an improvement okay so that's a wrap for today's video you guys in conclusion those drop brackets for the rear shocks or shock extenders they do seem to make an improvement just with whatever shocks you're running like I said it was really bad in the back before and it's definitely an improvement uh, I think we can still improve on this setup. And again, we are running a really aggressive drop in the back. So I may end up uh, C notching it to make for some extra travel here soon. Cause right now I'm only dealing with maybe a couple inches or so of travel before I actually bottom out. But uh, that's gonna be next. I was just trying to clean up some of the ride for now and see how far we can get away with not C notching it and get a decent ride quality in there. So if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you have a thumbs up. Also hit that subscribe button. If you're stopping into the channel for the first time, check out the other videos on the channel if you guys are into this kind of thing and different car and automotive related content and we'll see you guys on the next video.